Welcome back to another screencast. We're going to do two things in this screencast. First of all, we're going to continue our discussion of equality of functions that we started in the last video, and we're also, second of all, going to introduce functions that involve integer congruences. We looked at an example of one of those in the last video. We're going to look a little deeper in this video. I want to take the occasion to define a, define a very important set for you, the set z sub n, the integers with a little subscripted n. Now what that means is for n bigger than 2, a natural number bigger than 2, z sub n is the set of all integers from 0 up to n minus 1. So for example, z5 would be the set consisting of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Notice that 5 is not contained in the set. z5 does not contain 5, but it has 5 things in it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's why we call it z5. z26 would be the set of integers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so forth, all the way up to 25. Again, we don't include 26 in this set, but it has a cardinality of 26, which is why we use 26. And Z2 would just be the set 0, 1. Uh, very useful in computer science applications where we're talking about binary representations of things. We use 0, 1. That's the set Z2. So with that, we can just start defining some new functions for us. Here are a couple of functions, uh, both of which go from z5 to z5, but using what appear to be different looking formulas here. So remember, z5 uh, is the set that starts at 0, and I have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. 5 is not contained in that set, but there are 5 things in the set. So these are two different looking functions. They do have the same domain, and they do have the same codomain, I noticed this, but it, uh, could they possibly be equal to each other? Well, they don't have the same formula, but uh, that doesn't necessarily matter. Let's make a little table here, and the nice thing about functions that come out of Zn, like coming out of Z5, is that I can completely specify this function just with a table. There's only 5 things I can even put into this function. So let me just list them 0 1 2 3 4 so this is not going to be like functions from calculus say where I can only put in a representative sample of inputs and kind of guess at how the function is behaving I can completely exhaust the domain here just in this one table because there's only five items I could put in so if I just run through all five of them f of 0 would be 2 and reduced mod 5 that's also 2 f of 1 would be 3 f of 2 would be 2 plus 2 which is 4 f of 3 now would be 3 plus 2 and if I reduce that mod 5 its least non-negative residue is 0 uh, because 3 plus 2 is 5 3 plus 2 is 5, and if I divide 5 by 5, I get a remainder of 0, so that's where that comes from. And then finally, f of 4 would be 6. I would put 4 in here and get 6, but 6 mod 5 is 1. So there is the complete uh, specification for that function. I can see exactly what goes to what. Now let's take a look at g, which is similar to f, except instead of adding 2, I'm subtracting 3, and then reducing to the least non-negative residue mod 5. If I put in 0, I'd have 0 minus 3, and 0 minus 3, that's a negative 3, of course. Negative 3 mod 5 is plus 2. If I put in th uh, 1 for n, I'd have 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. Negative 2 mod 5 is 3. And I can keep playing this game. When I put in 2 here, I'd have negative 1, and negative 1 mod 5 is 4. When I put in 0, I have, I'm uh, sorry, when I put in 3, I have 3 minus 3, which is 0, and I don't have to do any reduction. And then 4 minus 3 is 1. So what I see here is that f and g are equal. f is equal to g as functions. f and g are equal as functions. Uh, because they have the same domain, they have the same codomain, and on every point in the domain, the outputs of each are the same. So although they look different, they are actually the same function. So it just goes to show you that just just because two functions don't have the same description, the exact same description or formula, if you will, it doesn't necessarily mean that they aren't equal. They can look cosmetically different, but still actually be equal under the surface. Now here's another example where I'm going to be going from Z7 to Z7. Remember, Z7 uh, would be the set starting at 0 and going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 
7 is not contained in that set, uh, but there are 7 things in that set. So let's make a table for this. Now this is uh, just to point out here, f of n, the first function, is n squared plus 4 mod 7. This g of n is n plus 2 squared mod 7, the quantity squared. And just to remind you of your algebra, it's not always the case that if I take n plus 2 and square it, I'm not going to just square the terms here, right? I think we're all smart enough to realize that. I would have to use a FOIL method. This uh, would be n squared plus 4n plus 4. Uh, but let's just try to, so we expect these two functions to produce different outputs because the formulas are not exactly the same. But let's see what happens here. So I'm going to make a table. This again, I can completely specify the outputs of this function just by listing them. I can completely exhaust the domain of this function. I'm going to do a few and then list the rest here, Just and you can compute these on your own. If I put in 0 for f here, or for n inside f, f of 0 would be 0 plus 4 mod 7, that's 4. If I put in 1, that would be 1 squared plus 4, that's 5, and that doesn't reduce to anything mod 7. Uh, the next one, if I put in 2, that would be 2 squared plus 4, that's 4 plus 4, which is 8, and mod 7, that is 1. I'm just going to go down through here and list the remaining ones, and you can check them on your own. I'd have 6, 6, 1, and 5. So uh, this function uh, is certainly a function. Notice that it is possible for two different inputs to map to the same output. In fact, that happens uh, three times in this particular function's case here. But there's the complete uh, outputs for this function. Now g of n, on the other hand, let's just see what it comes out to be. And again, I'll do just the first few of these and then leave the rest for you to compute. If I put in 0 for n here, I'd have 0 plus 2. That's 2 squared, I get 4, and I wouldn't have to reduce mod 7, so that's 4. If I put in 1, let's see what happens. I'd have 3 inside here, and then I'd have 3 squared, which is 9, and 9 mod 7 is 2. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just write the rest down. 2, I'd have 4 here, 1, 0, and 1. So here's an example of two functions uh, that involve integer congruence that are very, very different from each other. Although they have the same domain and the same codomain, uh, there's a lot of places where uh, the outputs are different. Uh, here, here, here. In fact, they're almost never the same. And the only place where you get the same output is here in the in, for n equals 0. So they have almost completely different outputs, and that makes them very different functions, which is what we suspected because algebraically there's no reason to suspect that those two things should be equal. However, I do want to move on to this next example here, and the only difference between this example and the previous one is uh, notice the formulas are the same here, except for instead of looking at uh, uh, integer congruence mod 7, I'm going to use the same formula but mod 4 this time, and I'm mapping from z4 into z4. And again, just to remind you of the definition, z4 is the set that would start at 0 and be 1, 2, 3. So these two functions here have similar formulas, n squared plus 4 versus n plus 2 squared. And, you know, in high school algebra, those two things aren't the same. So how should we expect these things to be the same? But watch this. And let me make a little table here. And it is a little table. There's only three things I can possibly put into these functions here. If I go to f of n, if I put in 0 for n, I get uh, 0 plus 4. And 4 mod 4 is 0. If I put in 1 for n up here in f, I have 1 squared plus 4. That's 5. And 5 mod 4 is 1. If I put in 2, I have 2 squared, which is 4, plus 4, which is 8, and 8 mod 4 is 0. And finally, 3 for n up in here would be 3 squared, which is 9, plus 4, which is 13, and 13 mod 4 is 1. Now, check out what happens when I use g of n. Now, again, we know, we really, really know, because we're smart people, that n squared plus 4 is not always equal to n plus 2 squared. Okay, FOIL method and all that. But watch what happens when I reduce mod 4. If I put in 0 for g, I have 0 plus 2. Uh, 2 squared is 4, and that mod 4 is 0. If I put in n equals 1 for g, I have 1 plus 2, that's 3. And I square that, and get 9, and 9 mod 4 is 1. Hmm. Now, if I use 2, up here I have 2 plus 2, which is 4. 4 squared is 16, and 16 mod 4 is 0. And finally, if I use 3 here, 
I have 3 plus 2, which is 5. 5 squared is 25, and five, 25 mod 4 is 1. So interestingly, although we're using virtually the same formulas for these two functions, I've changed up the domain and the codomain and changed the modulus here, and I get that these two functions are actually equal to each other. They have the same domain, the same codomain, and they agree on all their outputs. So I guess you could say that what you the, 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 the really bad mistake that gets made in high school algebra to say that this equals n squared plus 4 actually does work in Z4. <laughs> if you reduce everything mod 4, uh, that uh, mistake there is actually not a mistake anymore. But don't let that introduce any bad habits to you. So functions that involve integer congruence are really nice because we can fully specify the function just in a really short finite table. It makes it very easy to check if those two functions are equal to each other or not. Thanks for watching.